Hello, this is Joe Trahan welcoming you to the All Me podcast from the Taylor Hooten Foundation, whose mission is to enlighten the world to the truths about appearance and performance enhancing substances. As the national leader on this subject, they communicate their educational messages through various methods, including this podcast. Thank you for listening and enjoy the show. Hey, everybody. Brian Parker here, Director of Education, back to hang out with you for another episode. Many of us out there, and maybe a few of us that are listening to me talk right now, are looking for ways to achieve our physical goals. We might be relying on restricted diets or one-size-fits-all fitness plans that often don't take into account one very important thing, and that's you. So in this episode, we're going to be talking with professional fitness trainer and world-renowned natural physique athlete Nikki Stott. So Nikki is a former professional bodybuilder. She's also the founder of Warrior Babe. It's a customized fitness program designed for women to take control of their bodies through building lasting habits and lifestyles. So she will tell you more about that. We're also going to talk with Nikki about her own personal fitness journey and what drove her to start her own business in this area. We'll also tackle many different topics in the fitness world. That's going to include fad diets, nutrition and macros, proper mindset, supplements, and a lot more to give you some takeaways on how you can achieve your physical goals the right way. Nikki's also one of our recent All Me Advisory Board members. She made it to the top of her sport, all while living and competing clean. So we're going to discuss why she wanted to step up as a role model to provide that positive inspiration to others and the satisfaction she gets from knowing she has achieved her goals the right way. Every day, she's providing the tools to motivate others to live and compete All Me PED free. So let's bring Nikki into the show and get motivated. All right, Nikki, what's going on? How are you today? Hey, I'm doing well. Thank you very much. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing even better for talking to you. I'm, I'm pretty excited about our conversation today for a couple of different reasons. Uh, number one, uh, I know we've been partnered here a little bit because you just jumped on, on our All Me League board not too long ago, but we haven't actually had a chance to get to know you too much beyond that. So I'm excited just on a personal level to, to learn a little bit more about you. And number two, I'm also excited to uh, get motivated. So I, I know I don't know that much about you, but like, I at least know your social media and some of the stuff that you do. Like I'm, I'm inspired by a lot of the stuff that you put out there. I know that a lot of this is going to be really helpful to the the people that listen to this podcast. So I'm excited to get this information out there and, and get motivated myself. So if, if that sounds good to you, you ready, ready to motivate a few people today? 100%. Thank you for having me here. And I'm excited to uh, spread some motivation your way and everybody's way. You're, you're good at that. So let's, uh, let's hop right into it. I, I told you that I want to also take a chance to get to know you a little bit. So before we dive into a lot of the takeaways that I'll, that I'll have you share with everybody, let's, let's learn a little bit more about your background as a whole. So I, a couple of things about you that I already know, you're, you're a professional fitness trainer, you're an entrepreneur, I want to dive into all that stuff in just a little bit. But I want to start by learning how you got into this field. So as, sum it up as best you can. What was your journey like kind of getting into fitness and how did that go early on? Yeah, uh, to keep it short, but but also meaty, um, I, I played sports my entire life. Um, you know, I was like, I was captain. I was always, I felt like in a way motivating, wanting to be, wanting to be an athlete and motivate a team around me. Um, so I played sports my entire life, but then it was like that, like gray area of like college being out of sports from, from school and high school. I was like, what do I do with my life now? And, you know, fitness was always something that I, that helped me to fall back on to keep my mental it, sanity. Um, so really diving back into it in 2015. Um, that's when I, I got myself back into the gym and, uh, was like, okay, but you know, and, and just took on, took on new things, like being open to new adventures, which I like new skill sets to learn, um, outside of just playing like your average sports in, in, in school and high school. Um, so fitness has always been in my background, but kind of lost and then re refound it back in 2015. That makes sense. So then at that time in 2015, how, did, how, how serious did you kind of take it? Was it like, all right, let me kind of mess around with this? Or, or did you kind of already have an idea on like, oh, I might start a career out of this? Like, how did you hop back into it? Because I know that 
one of the reasons you and I got connected was you used to compete in fitness competitions. In fact, I just recorded a podcast with our friend Marjorie from the OCB yesterday. So is Thanks. that, was that a goal from the get go or did you just kind of jump into fitness and then progress with it and you got to that point? I mean, how did you get to the level where you were competing with this stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Great question. So back in like 2015, you know, they say that, that was that saying like, breakups make bodybuilders. <laughs> so, so for that little small backstory there and keeping the meaning, like I said, you know, I was in a relationship for three years. It was an engagement and the engagement got broken off. And it was kind of like, you know, in that, in those three years, I was kind of losing myself. And then when the engagement ended, it was like, okay, this is the time for Nikita resurface again. And for, for me, for my true colors to shine and for my, my, you know, root and identity to come back to the surface. And that's where I just dove back into, you know, it was, I was one of those new year's resolutioners in 2015. Let's say that too, as well. Um, and I got into the gym in January, but I, I just had no idea what I was doing. Like I knew fitness, but like, I didn't know weights. I knew cardio. Cause I was like, you know, that's what I thought cardio was like, okay, this is the way you're going to get the body that you've always, you know, that I envision. Like, I just got to run and I got to like, you know, do all that kind of stuff. And, uh, so in 2015, I was back into the gym, but like I said, I just went up to the cardio equipment, just was like, didn't had no, had fear of going into the weight room just because I had no idea what I was doing. So at that point I, uh, I signed on to do, um, two half marathons. And I trained for two half marathons and, and then at the same time, I decided to compete in my first bodybuilding show, which was November of 2015. So meanwhile, I'm training for two half marathons and a bodybuilding competition. And after the first marathon and more into the weightlifting side for bodybuilding, I was like, yeah, screw running. That's not my jam. I'm like, <laughs> unless like there's a donut in front of me and I'm chasing after a donut. I'm not running anymore. <laughs> like Fair. it was not my Fair. thing. Um, so then I dove into more lifting and had my first competition at the end of 2015. And it was with NABA. So it was like a smaller federation and went one first place, got pro and then competed with the pros in the same night. Cause I guess it was just the way their federation does it. And then from there it was like, I'm sold. Like I love lifting. I love the competitive nature. I love everything that mentally that I had to go through on that journey to get to the stage in 2015. So that's pretty much like the meat and bones of why I got back into fitness and how I got into the competition world. Yeah, that makes sense. I kind of like listen to your story because it's like you're, you're just like the rest of us, right? Like we've all been, we've all been dumped and headed to the gym. Not saying you got dumped. I'm not diving into <laughs> your dating life or anything, but like, I'm just, you know, we've all been through that. We've all hit January 1st on the calendar and decided, Oh, I'm, I'm going to go hit the treadmill. Like we've all had those moments, but I think it's cool that you took that, got into it, found out, no, this really is a passion of mine and, and, and really got serious with it. And it's taken you what you're doing today. And I guess along that journey and that path of yours, you know, at some point you must have had a mindset where you're like, okay, I've, I've got my own fitness journey going on, but I think I can also help other women do the same thing here. Like at what point did you decide to take that own passion of yours and turn that into training others? Yeah. So I think that was around the end of 2016, uh, because at early 2016 is when I competed with the OCB and went pro in my, in the, uh, physique category. And I was in, I was in school to be a nurse. So I completed being a nurse. I got my BSN and, uh, it was, I graduated in 2017, but it was the end of 2016 because side note, I almost got kicked out of nursing school because, you know, a little just vulnerability. Um, I didn't know that turnitin.com existed, but I used one of my friend's papers from turnitin.com and turnitin.com picked up 80% of, of my friend's paper, uh, you know, trying to get by, you know, that we've all done that. We've all done that. We've all been there. And if yeah. you're on listening to this and you haven't done that, then like, you know, <laughs> but uh, so I, I had to repeat a semester and in that semester, it was like, oh my God, like you know, what am I going to do? Like I had, I had a plan. I had a vision. I was going to be done at this X amount of a day. I was going to start nursing. And in that downtime, I got my personal training certification. I pursued, uh, being a personal trainer in like a small studio. 
um, around here where I live in, in Pennsylvania. And I, I took on my entire emergency department colleagues. Everybody joined my team and I was personal training them. And at that point I was like, okay, am I meant to be a nurse or I meant to pursue this, this, uh, personal training aspect. I was, and then that's, it just, it was like, I'm meant to pursue this personal training aspect. It was like, everything was like, here you go, Nikki, here you go, Nikki, here you go. It was more, more confirmation that this is the path that I'm supposed to go down. And then from there, I just, you know, there's, there's so much more of that story from, from where that personal training happens now, you know, warrior Bay, but, um, yeah, that's how I knew. I knew that, and I had, I was thriving, helping those people. Like I love nursing because at, at the core of it, my ultimate mission in life is to help as many people as, as possibly as I can. When I was a nurse, I thought that was, it was through nursing, but once I pursued the personal training side of things and I loved back-to-back personal training sessions. I loved motivating these guys. I loved seeing the results these people were getting. I loved the mindset shifts that, that these people were having. And I was like, yeah, this is definitely, this is, this is where I know that I need to turn my own passion, my knowledge, everything that I've learned into helping others also feel the same way that I felt after I have accomplished X amount of goal, like, or whatever goal I was going for. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, it just clicked, right? I mean, that's what happens in life. I think for a lot of us is we, we, try to navigate it. And we, we try things out here and there and we find a passion and then we, we, something just comes together and we say that this, this was meant to be right. And I, I think you're right. The synergy yeah. between what you were doing in nursing and fitness, that makes sense, right? I mean, you're helping people in different ways, but I, I can totally see the overlap there. And and I think that, you know, the, this path was meant for you and, and you've taken it and basically turned that personal training into your own business. I mean, you mentioned it just a second ago, warrior, babe. I, I want you to kind of let our listeners in on that a little bit. Right. So let's, let's, let's talk about that. Give us the elevator pitch on what warrior babe is, how that got started, what, what the program is, how it works and, and, and why you started it in the first place. Yeah. I mean, our ultimate mission uh, with warrior babe is to help women who are just fed up with you know, all, all these unrealistic old school, like Jenny Craig, like all those old school unrealistic approaches to getting that toned, like body shape that people want, um, and to help them become stronger and more confident versions of themselves. And we do it by, and have done it by creating, um, the social movement facilitated by like training applications, informational products, where we show and teach women, um, the diet and exercise practices required for them to crush whatever fitness goal they're going after. And we're, we're on this mission. We are on this mission to help as many, we, we crushed 10,000 women. Now our next goal is hundred thousand women. Um, and that's what our team, we we're all collectively on that mission together. And what, how we help women through those informational products is, you know, we're not, honestly, we're not another like, okay, download this application through the, the app store, right? We, we actually put women through an education-based program. So they understand why they're doing X with macros and why they're doing this type of workout and why X may factor into hormone imbalances and why, You know, you need to get on a coaching call with one of our coaches um, so that you can make sure that your macros when you were whatever, and I'm sure we'll dive into what macros are. um, If people are listening, they have no idea what macros are, but you know, we, we help women basically long story short, educate them along what and why they're doing through our products. And then we also have like one-on-one coaching too, as well. Yeah, that all makes sense. I mean, I, I I digged around a little bit as well. And and what I liked about it the most, and you know, it's one of those other, I think, facades when it comes to ways to accomplish goals and diets and all that is your program is a bit more individualized, right? Because I know you've you, you kind of just talked about some of these old school diets and plans and all that. We're gonna dive into some of those those facades and some of those things that people think work when they probably don't really. Yours is much more, I would say a custom approach, right? I think that you've even said that that's really the most effective for others that are trying to achieve whatever physical goal they're looking for. Like, why do you think that a custom approach is the way to do it? What, number one, what do you mean by that? Right. And how do we implement that? Yeah, hundred percent. So like hands down, it's gotta be a custom approach because 
And what I mean is like somebody who's 50 years old, it's, and, it, and it, it's backed off of science. Like I am, I am because of like my nursing background and just like the understanding of the human body and the, the anatomy and everything from processes and systems inside a 50 year old can't be using the same dietary calories that we'll dive into. I'm sure in a, in a little minute, but like, can't be eating the same type of intake as somebody who is 30 years old, right? Their metabolism hormones are completely different than somebody who is thriving with hormones at 30 years old. So it's gotta be a custom approach and it's gotta be custom approach, not just on the dietary side. It's gotta be custom approach on the workout side because what, uh, like someone who's 50 years old, less is actually more in that cycle of life. As opposed to when you're 30, you can thrive off of like five day intense workouts. Like you're, you're living your life at 30, right? I'm not saying you're not living your life at 50, but like less is more for the, for those women and where they think they're still in that same mentality as, as like a four year old, which is awesome, but they need to pull it back because of all the systems, all the processes, all the hormones that are you know, changing as their body evolves. So custom approach, like it, it hands down. Um, and it's the most effective way for them, for everybody, right. For somebody who's 50, 60 at the same time, being the same program as somebody who's 30 and 40. I mean, it, it makes sense. It's not, it's, you know, it's not that hard to think about either, right. We're all different ages. We're all different people. We're all built differently. We all have different things in my, like, there's just no way that there can be a cookie cutter thing that's out there for every single person that'll be successful with that. That just doesn't. Exactly. Yeah, and to like pick it back off of that. And I don't mean to cut you off there for a second, but like to piggy off, like somebody who's a hundred pounds overweight is not going to be following the same type of mat, like breakdown as somebody who maybe just need to lose 10 pounds, right? Body types are completely different. Like there's so many, everybody's individualized and everybody's different. And that's why everybody needs a custom approach to it all yeah it all goes back to some of just the old school thinking with a, a lot of the stuff that i that's really what i want to dive into next because one of the things that i i truly like respect about you is how open and honest you are with a lot of this stuff i mean particularly on your social media which I, i'm going to put all your social media handles and info in the show notes of this episode I and mean, i'll just throw out now like instagram at nikki stott like follow that in the next hour right because you're <laughs> you are you're very open about a lot of this stuff right it's not just it's not cookie cutter right you you displace a lot of myths that are out there and so i want to take a lot of that information that you throw out there on a daily basis and, and bring it to our listeners here and cover a few different things on, on some of the stuff that you talk about right so one of the first things i want to i want to let you rip into real quick because it falls right into that kind of cookie cutter approach is restrictive diets or fad diets whatever you want to call them so i'm, I'm going to pass the stage to you give us give us your thoughts on that lay, lay into that real quick oh man do are we sure we only got an hour together because i spend <laughs> the next five together with you on this <laughs> um yeah i mean you know first of all thank you for the shout out there and in the and um you know with, with how i show up there on social media i do i just want to bring like the honest truth to everybody so people can just be a little bit more you know understand what it really takes, right? Instead of falling back on these old mentality approaches. And when it comes to the real, the, the restrictive diets, because of that old mentality and like the women, especially the target market that we kind of speak to is like the 40, the 30, 40, 50 year olds, 60 year olds. And they're all in the quality of like eat less, work out more, or like shakes or Jenny Craig or like number system and like containers and really what it is, is like, again, the restrictive dieting and their restrictive mentality is making the results suffer because they're like, well, I can't have X and I can't have Y and I can't have carbs and I can't have uh, a glass of wine if I want to. And I can't. And then the reason why it's there's, they feel so restrictive is they're not they, they can't then get to, uh, they're, they're quitting. They're quitting before they even allow any type of result to happen because it's just too hard because they're going into that mindset of like, um, I have to restrict X, Y, and Z. I can't go to social events. I can't go out with friends. I can't do all of this stuff because I have to follow this plan. And that's just a, that's just a, a recipe for disaster. Now that's more of the mindset side, but the more the, the physical side is like, 
when people are not eating enough and these restrictive diets are being so preached upon and, and that they need to get, they need to follow this to get that type of result. Literally women come to us in warrior Bay with like a dumpster fire going on inside of with their metabolism. Like their metabolism is completely just shot. It's like, like they're eating 1300 calories or 1200 calories. And while you think that they should be losing weight, they can't because their metabolism is just so freaking slow. Um, so it's like, we're trying to, re- we repair and we try to, uh, you know, one of the biggest things that we do in the program initially is when somebody comes in, it's like, we talk about, they have to go through a retraining phase and people hate it because they have to spend like nine months in a retraining phase just to get their metabolism to work so that their future results are successful. Their cut is successful. Their, their maintenance is successful. Like just so they're like, just at the core root of all of this is that restrictive diet screwed metabolism. And if the metabolism is screwed, you can't, don't expect results. Like don't expect to get results easily, uh, without fixing it. Um, and that's something that we really, you know, we really harp on inside the program and we're not about restricted dieting. You know, we're about like, you know, balance. Like if you have, if you enjoy what you're eating, then you're going to be able to turn it into a lifestyle. And if you can turn it into a lifestyle, it just becomes habit after habit and second nature. And you're thriving, you know, two years after establishing the lifestyle that you need and your metabolism is functioning for you to get the results that you want. That yeah. was totally yeah. like all over the place. No, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I, I mean, I, I, I agree with you. I think it's true. I, I don't, I don't really think they work. I mean, I'll, I'll say that out of like my own experience. I don't know that there's many of us that haven't tried like, okay, I'm going to do whole 30. I'm going to do whatever for 90 days. And I don't think it actually works, right? Because it, it almost does create this mindset. Number one, this like a, another catchphrase I pulled off your social media, right? Then, then I'm having to look at things as a sacrifice instead of an investment, right? I, I pulled that one yes. from you. <laughs> and, it, and then what happens is all you're thinking about is what you can't have. And then when you hit the 30 days or 90 days, you're looking at it like, okay, well, now I can go back and, and start to enjoy my life again. It's like, well, that's not really you know, what we should be doing here. And I think the people, the reason why we fall into this, and I'm truly, I'm speaking as myself as one of them that's done this before, is I think what we are looking for is we're kind of, we can be a quick fix society a little bit. And I think people are looking for a quick change. And so, you know, I don't think that that's sustainable when, when we're talking about those kind of diets. And so if we are really looking for a, a sustained change, whether that be fat loss, muscle gain, whatever it is, it, it takes time. So, I mean, from your opinion, right? Because you're all about changing habits and creating a long-term change here. How long do th- does this process take? Or am I looking at this the wrong way? Should we even be putting a timeline on this kind of stuff in the first place? No. Timelines, you know, if you can accept that your journey is going to be anywhere up to from like six months, eight months to a year, depending on where what shape your body is in, Um, it, the whole journey just gets so much more fun and so much more enjoyable. But if you're looking at a timeline of like what the old school approach looks at, like, you know, you pop your body into a mic waving out in 30 seconds comes a toned body. It's like, like, that's so unrealistic. And it's, it's like getting away from that instant gratification, even so much as up to three months, um, and, and being more set on the delayed gratification that I just spoke to like six, eight, 12 months. And then because it's not it's not just like, okay, I'm going to get on this diet and this workout plan. I'm going to get X results in uh, eight weeks. It's like, we got to start looking at the sustainability of the results and six, eight, 12 plus months is in that window of time. You're developing habits that are going to lead you to a more sustainable um, and realistic outcome rather than like, again, going back to the three months or, you know, eight weeks. And then it's just like, if you don't establish the habits that you need for longevity in those six, in those eight weeks, which is probably not going to happen, or you learn to really be disciplined to repeat those habits, uh, which doesn't really happen because people are just on that hamster wheel over and over and over again. So it's like getting out of that instant gratification and getting away from the timelines and being okay with like, okay, my journey is going to take time and being realistic. And like, it's not sexy. Like people don't want to hear that. Like, you know, they're like, no, I want to be like, 
right? Like I want to be ready for summer. Like I have two months or I'm going on a vacation in like three weeks. <laughs> like, and I'm just like, whenever I share that, I'm like, okay, <laughs> Well, and I'm just, you just got to be blunt with the person and we got to be blunt with ourselves. It's unrealistic. And that, that way of looking at things is just so old school. We got to just look at it like, okay, it's going to take time. And the more you're honest and realistic with yourself, it becomes enjoyable. It's fun. And you really turn it into a lifestyle. Yeah. I knew, I knew when I asked the question and even using that word timeline, I'm like, oh, Nikki's not going to like that word. That's not, <laughs> <laughs> should be using goals. There's all, again, old school thinking words and things we got to hit and the magic numbers and all that. So you're, you're right. That's not what creates long-term change and, and long-term habits, like you said. And so if we are going to truly start to work on this, right. And we're, we've, we're really going to invest in ourselves and make some long-term change here. I know we're thinking and, and talking a lot about, maybe exercise. And I know you even do a really good job of putting out exercises and, and things you can do while you're at the gym and things like that. But I would, I would venture to guess that nutrition has got to be the starting point for a lot of this, right? So that's where I'm going to kind of ask you, how important do you think nutrition is when it comes to this journey? But then what does your nutrition look like on a daily basis? Or is that something that's constantly changing depending on whatever goals you have at the moment? Yeah. So going back to question number one there, uh, nutrition. Oh man. You know, I used to come from the mentality that like, it's a hundred percent, both nutrition and a hundred percent training. But as I have evolved in my, in my, uh, journey and through the last couple of years, it's like nutrition is hands down the King and exercise is the queen. And, uh, you know, it's, it's science. It's again, it's just science. It's like what you eat, you know, it's going to have a effect on your body, um, good or bad. And the second line of that question there was, what does my nutrition typically look like? It does, it changes. So like whatever I set for myself in terms of goals, whether that's I'm jumping into one of our team challenges or, I am wanting to get myself ready for, you know, I just want to drop a couple uh, percentage of body fat. Um, it, it changes. And I, and I'm, I, I, I have such control over from just the years of being in this and being super consistent that uh, I can kind of flip switches left and right. Um, but no matter what, I'm always usually around an 1800 and, and two, uh, 2000 calorie range with macros. And if I'm even up into like so much of a, of a maintenance or close to like a, a heavier surplus or like a, on the lighter edge of the surplus, man, I can push like 2,500 calories or 2,600 calories. And that's where like my life is golden. <laughs> yeah. I mean, nutrition, yeah. nutrition is it. It's it. It's the secret weapon. We say that every day because we do a lot of presentations to young athletes and get a lot of questions and looking to gain weight. And I want to put together a fitness plan and all this. And, and I, my first question is always, do, do you, what's your nutrition look like? Right. I mean, most yeah. young athletes are under fuel, number one, or they're not thinking about this or trying to just think they can push through it. It's got, it's got to be the starting point. So I'm with you a hundred percent. And I want to pull out your answer. The one word that you've thrown out a couple of times that I, that I do want to give our listeners a little bit more insight into, and that's macros, because you talk a lot about counting macros on, on your accounts. And even today you've mentioned, I know that's what you focus on when it comes to nutrition. So explain to our listeners a little bit, what does that mean? You know, macros, when you say that, and, and why do you think it's so beneficial to, to follow that, that plan? Yeah. Macros are life. <laughs> <laughs> macros are just the, the best thing. Um, so, but I don't look at it. Like I'm going to first say this, like, I don't look at macros as like another diet. I don't look at it as like, Oh, whole 30 macros. Like they have the same, like, um, equivalents. Like I look at it as macros is like a skill set, right? Macros lets you learn so much about what you're putting on your plate. And it lets you learn so much about, uh, the different food groups and about portion sizes and just so much in general. So I look at it as like a skill set, almost to like riding a bike. Um, but you know, macros again, it's like, it's science. It's, it's just all science. And 
why it's, it's like, if you, it's, first of all, you know, you have the calories and I, I don't know if I want to get too, too deep into the sciencey side of things, but like, right. You have the calories. We all know what calories are, but like those calories break down and you can't just hit your calorie numbers because all those cow that, that major number comes from different, uh, you know, macros, protein, fats, and carbs. And those protein, fats, and carbs, they all break down systematically different in your body. They all have different functions. They all play different functions that one controls like building muscle, one controls your, your blood sugars and fuel and recovery. And one controls like hormones and all that kind of stuff. So they all break down differently when you eat in accordance to what your macros need to be. And let's just use the goal of like losing weight right? You're eating less than what your, what your maintenance body weight would need to be consumed in calories. Um, you know, it, again, it's just science. You're in that caloric deficit. And if you're truly in that caloric deficit, you're going to get to your goal. And if you're breaking it down, the protein, fats, and carbs, um, you're going to, you're going to feel insanely like with energy, with like, everything is just going to, to make sense. And that's why I feel like macros are just insanely beneficial because a it's science. And then, um, two, it's a skill set. So it's like, you learn as you go. And it's something that can serve you for the rest of your life. Yeah. I think it creates habits. Like you said, I think it's a more full approach than, you know, I think a lot of people get caught up in calories and that's a number and I got to stay below this or hit this. And maybe that's fine if your sole goal is just to lose some weight, but I think there's a lot more that goes into it. Like you said, and I'll put some more uh, information and links to more macros and some of the stuff you've put out there about it and, and how that can be used because it, it does make sense. And, and I think it, uh, creates a habit and creates, you know, something that can be followed re regardless of what exact things you're trying to do with your body at, at any given moment. So that, that makes sense. It's just another way to, to kind of customize things like we've talked about before. And I, and I have one last question on, I guess it kind of falls into the nutrition aspect of things. Uh, I want to talk about supplements for just a minute, because I know that plays into this whole conversation that we're talking about, about what's putting inside of our bodies and what kind of fuel we're using to. So a lot of people out there turn to supplements. I know this because I've been doing this a long time. Now, I, I think a lot of people turn to them for the wrong reason, thinking that it's, you know, going to be the magic powder that that's what it takes to get the body I want. And I don't think that a lot of times they're, they're focusing on their nutrition in the first place. Maybe they're not even aware of some of the issues in the industry. So Again, we could spend a whole another podcast just talking about this, but what general thoughts from you, what are your thoughts on supplements as a whole? And then knowing that you have that focus on nutrition that you do, are there some products that you take along the way? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so when it comes to supplements, like, first of all, they are not going to get you the results. Like they're going to benefit you and getting the results, but they're not going to get you the results, training, nutrition, sleep, like all of the small little things that people like don't pay so much attention to are true. And that are free <laughs> are going to get you the results, but the supplement side thing, they're just going to benefit you. Um, so, you know, if people rely on having three protein shakes a day. First of all, you're not getting the true nutrients, um, that you're going to get from whole foods that you're getting in that protein shake. And that's why, like, I always strive to preach, you got to get the whole foods over the artificial sources. And that if you want to have supplements in there, sure. Awesome. Great. But don't ma make it like a 10% of your day. And the 90 rest is all, uh, whole foods. Um, and then like, speaking to some of the ones that I personally love to take. And honestly, in my entire journey, really the only two things that I really truly have leaned on are pro as a protein powder, which I mean, I think everybody should just have that because it's a great added source of protein, which is a really hard thing for a lot of people to hit. But if you can hit at least one protein shake or two in your day max, then that's great. Um, and a carb, so carb powder. And those are really the two that I rely on. I'm not a big like pre-workout person. I'm not a big like creatine. I'm not a big, um, because like everything that you, that people that, that is in a supplement form, is, it's in food, it's in food. So like whole food is so important at the end of the day. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, that's what I, it's kind of goes back to, you know, again, I get a lot of questions about supplements when I do what I do and you know, that, should I use this? I'm thinking about taking this and I say the same thing that I just said a minute ago is like, what does your nutrition look like? Cause if that's not in place, it really doesn't matter. Right. Because it's not, it's not a secret pill or shake or bar. It's not just going to, you know, make everything right. It's just not what it's meant to do. Right. I always say that like 
if you're taking a supplement and you're like seeing results, but you're not doing anything else, like stop taking that supplement. There's probably, there's probably something in there that you don't want to be putting inside of your body. Right. So like, we got to be super cautious with that. And then if you have that focus on nutrition, then let's, let's put together a supplement plan outside of that, that might help, you know, accomplish some of the stuff that you're looking for. But yeah, I think that's an important conversation to have just because I know how many people out there are, are taking stuff and maybe not thinking about it as big picture as we should at the end of the day. Right. Yeah. hundred percent. At the end of the day, it comes back to those basics that you're saying, right? Hard work, nutrition, consistency. That's what equals the results, right? No supplement's going to make the, make the difference whether, you know, you create the body you want. It's, it's back to the basics. Make sure you have that underway and then use like the, the, the supplements as like a secondary. I know. And it's great. So pe- people don't like, don't want to hear that when you tell them that it's like, look, <laughs> I mean, it's like, no, I want, I want I need to take something, right. I need to like, something's got to be out the there. Easy like, way like, out uh, again. People uh, want that easy way out. I know, it's, crazy. <laughs> it's just, you know, and I've been there and I get it. Right. But it's, you know, that, yeah. I think that actually kind of gets me into my, one of the next things I want to tackle with you real quick. And that, that is the mindset, because I know we're talking about, you know, fitness, we're talking about nutrition. These are all important things, but I, I think you also probably got to have the right mindset alongside all of that to make this work, right? So I imagine doing what you do, right? A mindset is a super important thing. And I imagine you also have come across a lot of people that have some mindset issues before they even start diving into a lot of this stuff. So what are the some of the most common mental hurdles that you run into that you've seen other people face and and how do we overcome them i know there's a lot there that we could tackle but as as a whole where does the mindset fall into this whole equation yeah hun- uh mindset man it, it, yeah 100 percent. whatever you're whatever you think you can achieve like you will and whatever you think you can't you won't mindset's such an important hurdle and it, it, it's such an important, it's so hard for, for people to, uh, kind of crack that mental game. Um, one of the majority of the hurdles that I see when people first start their fitness journey, and even like, you know, dad, thinking back to when I first started mine is always time. And people always have the excuse of, I don't have enough time. And a way to overcome that is to understand, like, you know, we all have the same 24 hours in the day. And I've seen moms that have two sets of twins tackling these workouts and hitting their macros and losing over a hundred pounds. And I've seen mom, I've seen moms who are driving, you know, to volleyball tournaments and like, you know, we all, and crushing it and, and, you know, hitting their goals and, you know, co- competing. And, you know, it's like, it's just at the end of the day, it's like, how bad do you really want it? And if you're using the lame excuses, the, you, the, the lack, the, the excuses is what you're going to get. Um, so it's kind of like, you know, the way that I like to, to overcome to the mental, this mental one specifically is think about the person that you want to become and think about those actions that that person's going to be taking. And if you can jump that far in the mental game and think about that person and that outcome, a person's at the end goal, right. Has achieved the goals. That person is not using the excuse of time to, to accomplish what they, what they've accomplished, right? They're making it happen. They're figuring out, they're planning, they're preparing, they're utilizing, they're, they're tapping into time management. And most of all, they're tapping into, you know, putting themselves first. That's another one that I hear all the time with moms, um, that they meet the needs of everybody else and they make sure that their kids are up, you know, you know, getting a soccer practice or that the kids have dinner on the table and that their, you know, husbands are happy. But like at the end of the day, it's 4% of the, of an, an hour is 4% of your day to get a workout in, right? You can plan the night before all of your meals. And when you're doing all the things for yourself and you're putting yourself first, you're at, like the, like the airline, put your mask on first before you help others first of all, but secondly, you know, you're becoming a role model. Like that is like having the discipline to put yourself first and show up for yourself and do things that are going to make you happy and accomplish the goals that you want to accomplish. That's trickling down to like every way that's around you and your circle to your husband, to your kids. And, you know, um, it's kind of like all in all with the mindset, it's getting rid of the negative energy and the things that don't support you and revamping them into a way that they do support you and taking action on them. Because the more that you just say, 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 and like, yeah, like I'm going to do this. I want to do this. Or, 
you know, you got to take action on it and you got to follow through with that. And that's where all of those old negative things start to shift. The more action you take on the positive, all those negative things get pushed away. It's a great way to look at it. You know, I, I think that kind of goes back to what we talked about a little bit earlier is like, as a whole, we kind of have this sacrifice mindset a little bit. And that might be one of the reasons why so many of us say we don't have time. And it's because I got to sacrifice my time to my job and my kids and everything else. And it's not, it's not that the, none of those things are, are not important. Right. But it's like, you know, some, some point you got to think about yourself and then all of the other stuff around it, as you said, will probably benefit as a result. Right. So it's, it's looking a little bit more big picture. You have a really good way of kind of taking these things and, and looking at it and, and giving some solutions. It's, it's like you said, there, there's always going to be an excuse, but other people are getting through it. So let, let's find a way to, to do that together. It's kind of like even the nutrition thing. I, I hear it all the time. Like, well, I don't have time for breakfast. I'm like, what well, do you have? you know, 20 minutes on Sunday night to make seven breakfasts for the rest of the week. Like there's always ways, right? It's just, you, you gotta, yeah. you gotta be willing to, to do it. I think that's, that's another great. big one. They don't want to plan and they don't want to, yeah. you know, that's, that's a huge, another mindset one that taking the time to plan and prepare. And that's, that's what sets you up for success right there. So it's like, you know, in the five seconds that you're making an excuse that you can't or won't prep you're you just missed out on five seconds to take in action to start meal prepping and start planning and start taking the right action. Yeah. There, there, there's always a way out. You got to want to look for the ways in, you know, that's uh, exactly how it's even the day. And, and the other question that I got for you about mindset, and this is probably a, a little bit different angle to, to that issue, but I, I do think it exists. And, and I, and I know that you probably know this just in the space that you're in and I don't want to dive too deep in this topic because there's, there's a lot of ways we could dissect this, but I do want to, touch on body image for, for a minute, right? So being in the space that you are, I, I'm, I'm sure you're aware of the body image pressure that our society just creates. It, it exists. It just does. I don't, I don't want to act like it doesn't, right? That's not the point of this, but I just know personally from what I do for a living that the number one reason I have people turning to appearance and performance enhancing substances and supplements and anabolic steroids, it's, it's really due to body image pressure that, that they feel from, from a lot of different angles that are around them. So what is your advice for others out there that, that feel this pressure, right? Because it, it exists. I, I don't want us to ignore that. Right. But do you have any thoughts on how we can navigate this maybe a little bit better than we are right now? Yeah. I mean, I know you guys are doing a lot and I know this whole feder, uh, federation foundation is, is um, is uh, both OCB and Taylor Hooten. It, it, it preaches a lot of, you know, why and education, everything like that. I look at it from the mindset of, I have a 15 year old, uh, little brother who is, you know, in the sports, man, he was, he's a, he's a jock. He is a jock of his school and he's very popular and he, he crushes it and everything that he does. And, um, uh, he really looks up to the fact that like, I'm in, um, the, you know, I'm in the lifting and I've accomplished these X, Y, and Z with competitions and, um, you know, he talks to me about supplements all the time. So like, I, I look at it from the mindset of him and I look at it in terms of like, he doesn't know what he doesn't know. Right. He's only going by that pressure and by that like stigma of all the dudes that are around him, all the guys on his football team. And maybe they're probably chatting it up about all that kind of stuff. So it's like the way that I approach it with him and I would approach it with anybody else. Um, is first of all, definitely education, right? They don't know what they don't know. So it's like educating them on it, which you guys do an amazing job on, but also to teach that individual to think for themselves and to really, and, and, and to, and to, you know, almost like be like, I like to think of it as like a scientist, be a scientist thinker, be curious about the information that you don't understand that you may be missing out on and just start questioning everything. And you know, really, really understand what is going on, like how these things are not benefiting you um, and how they can't and how, what, what avenue could lead down and like always be reinforcing how much they still have to learn and how naive they are into the situation that they, it, it could be, you know, not a good avenue to go down. So it's like, it's, it's more education, I think, and just having the individual, like, you know, be able to think for themselves and think through a situation that, is it because I'm being peer pressured or with the whole stigma around the appearance, or is it that I'm making a general thought process because this is for my health? You know, it's like, 
kind of, it's like almost stand, like wanting to stand apart. It's like, don't, don't just be peer pressured into what everybody else is doing. Think for yourself and stand apart. Yeah. I mean, you're speaking my language when you throw that word education around, cause that's, that's our end goal. That's our mission. That's what we try to do every single day. And I, I do think that's, that's one way that we help navigate this, right? Like, so we're talking about body image pressure and then the behavior that it creates and the temptation that it causes to use this or use that. Well, if we don't have education in place, when those thoughts creep into our minds, then we're going to be much more likely to maybe, you know, use whatever it is that we're thinking about, because we don't necessarily know the risks or the other side of this, right? So education is really, I think, how we not prevent things like body image pressure. That's not what I, I, I want us to do as a whole. I do think we need to discuss and, and admit that that's out there. But it's how do we also get people the tools to then, when that pressure comes along, make the right choices as a result of that. And I think education is what's in place because, you know, I, I think without that, we, we just, I just know that a lot of people are turning this to this kind of stuff. And that's, I mean, I'm, I'm curious and, and feel free to, to not answer this if you don't want to, but when you were first kind of getting into a lot of this and your fitness journey uh, were, you know, things like performance enhancing substances, was that something you were ever tempted by? I mean, even today, I got to imagine that there's people on your social media that, that want to call you out on that kind of stuff. How does it make you feel when some of those that follow you now are accusing you of, of using some of this stuff? Oh man, I get called out every single day, probably like every five minutes on like our Facebook ads, like saying that I juice and saying that I look like a man and saying that it was taken all this, all my body was by steroids. And honestly, I love it. Like, I love that because I know deep down that I put in the hard work and I put in the, uh, you know, the training and the consistency and the dedication and discipline. So I love it. That stuff doesn't bother me. Um, but at the beginning of my journey, honestly, you know what? I was really blessed with a coach that um, helped me understand the, you know, what, what, y'all, whatever, what we're talking about, education, right? He helped me understand um, and open up my eyes to, you know, this is a path and this is a path. And it's like, you know, you could go down either or which one you kind of, which one do you want to go down? You know? And, and uh, I was never, ever pushed or told that I had to, or um, cause I've met people that were so naive that coaches were like, well, in order for you to go to pro, you have to take steroids. Um, I was never in that boat. Um, so I, I'm blessed in that arena and never, never even questioned the use of wanting to go down that road. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I, that, that, that feels like you now that you just embrace the, embrace the haters. Let's call them that. Right. Like but that's exactly. social media for you, you know, but that, that social media, the other side of the coin is what ends up creating a lot of this pressure on the other side of things. But I, yeah, sure. I, I, yeah. yeah I, I mean, I love that you just kind of take that and say, you know what, like, I've, I've earned everything that, that I'm doing here. And, and that's really something that you make sure others know. And I think that's super important because that, that provides inspiration for others that have similar goals. I mean, that's one of the ways that you and I got connected. That's why we even had this conversation is because, you know, we inspire others through what we call our all me league, which is composed of athletes of all kinds of different levels and sports. And you, because of you the, living and competing, you know, all me PED free as, as this league does, you, you wanted to step up and be a part of this and provide that, positive messaging and inspiration to others. Why was this something that you wanted to be a part of? And, and how do you think that, 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 that it makes an impact? I think it makes an impact, with just spreading the word around all of this. I mean, geez, we see it. So we see it so commonly, um, in the bodybuilding world that people are just passing away left, right, and center around this specific, uh, steroid topic. And I think it's just so important to, show everybody that it is insanely possible, um, to eat healthy, put in the work, you know, be consistent, you know, go through the grueling pain. Like, you know, it sucks sometimes it, it, take it in the longevity, put the time into it, allow yourself like the, the year, two years, three years, five years, rather than taking that short, short route, right. It kind of goes back to what we talked about that instant gratification, which is exactly what the all, like the PEDs and the steroids do. They, they give you that short instant gratification of bam, in three months you could look jacked, but, and freakishly like disgustingly jacked. Um, but I think it's, 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 a. Uh, it's being able to preach that like, it's fully possible if you do the hard work and put the work in, you don't ever need to go down, 
that path of even entertaining the steroids and PEDs. If you just put your head down, do the work and, and stay healthy. Yeah. It never pays off in the long run. That's what I always tell people. And I don't shy away from the stuff that, you know, this stuff works, but at the end, you're going to look back and you're, you're, you're probably going to deal with health issues as a result. Number one, or number two, you're just not going to feel actually accomplished at the end of the day, because you didn't do that all on your own. I mean, that's, that's what's truly rewarding when you can look back. And as we talked about before, regardless of how long it takes, you can say, yeah, I, I was the one that did this. I put in the work and I, and I got myself here. And so that's what I think is, is what real inspiration looks like. And so I, I appreciate you doing that every single day with what you do. And that's how I'll, I'll wrap this thing up. I mean, we, there was so much stuff I wanted to touch on that, you know, that you talk about that I'll, that I'll give you the floor. If there's any other motivational tips or advice that you want to throw out there that we didn't get to any other catchphrases that I didn't miss on. There was another one I had written <laughs> down, uh, like systems over goals. That's a good one. Any, any other advice out there for anybody tuning in that, that are looking to get the res- whatever results are looking for and anything else you want to throw out before we wrap this up? Yeah, hundred percent. I think going back to that goals and the systems is really important because so it's, it's, again, it's like, the, let's start thinking about new ways of thinking because goals are kind of like an old school term um, because goals are what are the results that you want to achieve. That's awesome. That's great. That's dandy. But the systems are about the processes that lead you to those results. So if you don't have the systems like meal prepping or tracking your macros or getting your workouts in or getting your sleep on par or drinking your water, if you don't have those systems in place, those goals are going to just keep getting, again, that timeline. It's going to keep getting longer and longer and longer and longer to get to. So make sure you get those systems and those processes that lead you to the results. Systems got to be 100%. That's one thing. Two, you got to learn habit stacking. I'm really big on habits. So if you are a beginner and you don't yet have meal prepping down or you don't yet have that, you know, 30 minutes a day before to go in my fitness pal and start tracking your macros um, down. And you're one of those people that's just like, I'm going to track as I go. And by the end of the day, I get to like, you know, I have 20 macros or 20 grams of carbs or 30 grams of protein or, you know, X, Y, and Z with the fats then, and you're going to feel defeated at that point. You've got to have it stack. So you got to get the meal prepping. You got to get the preparation down. And then that next one, or maybe like five stacks of habits later, you've accomplished. Okay. I can, I understand meal prepping, understand tracking my macros. I can kind of track as I go throughout the day, knowing confidently that when I get to like five o'clock, I can go into my fitness pal, plug in everything that I ate and know what I have to eat for the rest of the day. So it's like, as you evolve on your journey, you've got it nailed down basic habits, intermediate habits, and then you can get up to the advanced, but don't expect to go from beginner to advanced habits. If you can't lay down the habits that you need to at a beginner's level. Yeah. We're creating a lifestyle, right? That's, that's what we're doing here. We're creating habits and that's how we create, you know, long-term, I don't even like to use the word change, right? It's just, you know, it creates a a different lifestyle at the end of the day. And that's what, that's what you embody every day. And so, I mean, I'm telling you like, please go follow Nikki on social media. Like if you ever like need to change some mindsets, you need some inspiration, just go watch about three videos from you. I mean, I'm, I'm going to make posters of, of your catchphrases and put them in my office, right? Just when I'm having a bad day when I wake up. So, <laughs> I appreciate all that you do. I appreciate, I appreciate the, that. I appreciate the honest approach. I really do think it makes a difference, but more, most of all, I just appreciate you doing it the right way. I, I really do think that there's, needs to be more and more people talking about that and providing positive messaging and, and being a positive role model. So thank you for stepping up and, and doing that and showing others that, that you can achieve your goals the right way and live and compete without this stuff. That's that's really all, what we're all about. So, so thanks for putting that out there. Hey, absolutely. And thank you for the time, Nikki. I enjoyed our conversation. Hopefully we can do it again soon. In the meantime, I'll put our, our notes down for all our listeners. Your websites uh, are all me league. If anybody wants out there wants to Follow Nikki's footsteps to live and compete this without this stuff. Just head to allmeleague.com and together we'll all have a positive conversation. We'll, we'll be creating lifestyles all over the place. So thanks again for the time, Nikki. I much appreciate it. Hey, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Well, that's it for today's show. Thanks for listening to the All Me Podcast from the Taylor Hooten Foundation, a nonprofit organization leading a national campaign to enlighten people to the truths about appearance and performance enhancing substances and inspiring people to live and compete without the use of these substances. Please be sure to subscribe to our podcast and tune in to our next episode.